everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really adorable diorama card. This is one that I made during my Facebook Live Craft Along. I'm doing these about three times a week and they're over on my Facebook page. I'll share the links below. It's a really, really fun couple of hours. You know, get to maybe meet some new like-minded crafters. Very, very friendly group. So if you do want to do that to just kill a few hours, then yeah, check out that link. But here is the card, it's beautiful. I did say at the beginning that I wanted to go very over the top. You can see all of these vines. Well, it's the, it's the leaves from the willow tree and there is a stamped image of a willow tree right in the background there. You can just about make it out. And then I've just added all this lovely detail. You can see I've used my glossy accents <laughs> on the eyes, just here to create that kind of water effect on the dragonfly here. And then I've combined two sentiments. The sentiment that goes with the stamp set is just swanning in to say, and then the high is actually from a crafter's companion one. So again, just, you know, maybe just to give you some ideas to mix up your, your sentiments and create them. But I think this looks absolutely adorable. It all folds completely flat and will fit into a five by seven um, maybe a bouncy envelope, that's what I'm calling the ones that I make. That's using the envelope punch board. Or you can use my box envelopes, which again, I will link as well for you. You've got all the space on the back here to stamp and write your message. I will also give you the measurements for a six by six size as well. So then you have the two to choose from. They stand up beautifully and I just think they're adorable. So let me show you how to make this really fun card. Okay, so this is the stamp set. So it's, the, it's by Creative Stamps and it's called Serene Swans. And you can see here the two together so you can stamp them you know you don't have to have both in a card if you don't want to but to create the scene I did use all of those and then like I said that sentiment there then this is where I use the high so it's from the floral friends by crafters companion it's a really nice stamp set I've gone to it quite a lot actually so um, yeah you've got some great ones awesome at any age flowers bloom all for you I thought of you today that's just a great card when you just want to send someone a card how nice to just have that, you know, I thought of you today, I think it's lovely. Then this was the one that I used to stamp this one here. You can see how that one looks. And also the lily there and the pads. And then there's the dragonfly, which I haven't stamped yet, so I can do that one later on. But there's also these here, which I used to create the background, but I think I'm gonna do more of an easier version for the video. If you do wanna see how I created more of a I guess a layered with detail, then you can check out that Facebook Live. So that's that one. I also show you this lovely die set from Paper Discovery, which will create the five by seven size for you. So if you're someone that would prefer to use the dies, because I know we've all got our preferences, then this is a really, really nice one. You have all these different layers and I will share in my blog post for this video, the cards that I created using this one as well. And there's also a video which I will pop up here, just showing you the samples that I made using that one. And then I also used, the vine die from the paper discovery kit so this was kit number four this one's now actually sold out but if you do have it you know it is a handy one it's actually here on the paper you can just see on the front there and it's just this one here but you know any kind of leaf kind of you know that dangle if you want to create that kind of real detailed look that I've done but that is the one I use so for those of you that do have this kit because I know a lot of you do then you could also use that as well Okay, so I've made a five by seven version. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make a six by six, but all the measurements for the five by seven version will be in my blog. Okay, so if you do wanna make the five by seven, you put it together and follow you know, the construction as I would with this one, but for the actual measurements, just follow my blog post. So for this one here, again, if you wanna do that six by six, you'll want a piece of 11 by six cardstock. And along that 11 inch side, you want to score at half an inch, one inch, one and a half, two, and two and a half. And you can continue and then score at eight and a half, nine, nine and a half, ten, and ten and a half. Or you can do that side, flip and do this one the same. So it would be that half an inch, one, one and a half, two, and two and a half. You know, some people have a preference. They like to do it that way, you know, at both ends, or they just continue. So I'll just give you the options there. Then your two inner score lines here, because this is now your six by six panel, you want to fold both of them in so they become mountain folds, and then just work out. So then it would be a valley, a mountain, a valley, and you'll finish with a mountain. And you want to make sure that that panel is facing towards you, you know, it's flat and it's facing in. 
So you've got your mountains here. So if I bring it up, you should have three mountains on the side there. One, two, three. So again, just created my first mountain, then a valley, mountain, valley, finishing with the mountain. So again, both of those pieces off, you know, the, the outer edge is facing towards the inside there of the card. So if I bring it up, you'll see now that stands up on its own. Okay, so that's all the scoring that you need done. Like I said, the five by seven, follow the score lines in the blog, but you'll put it together just like that. Okay, then I have cut a piece of six by six and I've cut two pieces. There are two pieces stuck together here. And what I use to create the aperture on the inside is the second largest die from the Distress Squares by Daisy May. But any square will do and you don't even have to have dies. You could also cut this using your trimmer and a score, you know, a metal ruler and a cutting knife. You don't need to have the dies either. So, but this one here, if you do want to create a similar sized window, but like I said, you may have a circular window, you might have a shaped window. You know, we've all got different dies in our stash, so go and have a look at what you've got. Yours might be rectangular, oval, all sorts, so have a little look. But this one, if you want to get something similar to mine, it's a four and seven eighths of an inch squared. Okay, so like I said, I cut two pieces. There are two stuck together here. Just because you cut such a large amount out, it could weaken. So I've stuck two together there using my Kalau glue. So that's actually now become a really strong, you know, piece of card. And I use 300 GSM anyway. So yeah, very, very strong. But what you want to do is when, before you cut that middle section out, is put the two together and put the die over it and run both pieces through at the same time. Because even if it doesn't cut right through to the bottom one, it will leave an embossed kind of square. So then you could also put, you know, then you can put that over the top and then die cut the next one again. Um, but at least then your frames are exactly the same size. Okay, so you want to create that. Then I have got this piece here, this teal piece, and this is where I said I'm going to do my background a little bit different because I think I'm just going to pop this colour here on the back and then I've got some more that I'm going to use to stick on the bottoms here to create this water effect. So rather in the background of this one, I've got the sky and like the land. This one is just gonna be the water just continuing. So it's gonna be the same color cardstock, which I'm gonna have along the bottom here as well. Okay, so what I've got here, this is actually left over from when I done the live craft along, but I wanna make sure that it is six inches wide, okay, um, for the very front one. So. This already has a curve, so I'm going to keep this one for the very front and I'm going to do this so it is, um, it's a bit hard to cut because I've already cut into it, so I'm just trying to make sure that I keep this all lined up. So let's do it that way. Um, now I'll go back to that way actually. Right, okay. And this one here, because you want it to be the full, we're going to stick that one inside in a minute, but this length here is going to actually connect the front but I want it to look like the bottom, you know, I want it to look like the river or the lake, whatever it is they're in. So that one there, but then the other two to go in here, because you'll see there's two more inside, okay? And there's one on the very back, which actually I didn't end up putting anything on, but it's there. So these will also be that same kind of um, height. So I'm going to do that one because that's a bit crooked, but we'll cut it. It's all going to make sense, but these ones here, you want to be five and seven eighths. You want them to be slightly shorter, purely because the card needs to be able to fold flat. And if you do them exactly the same width, it will buckle and it will become a little bit arched. Whereas you can see here, mine's completely flat and that will fold completely flat. Nothing kind of lifts up, and that's because these two behind are slightly shorter, and like that's why it's good to do that five and seven eighths and not the full six. So you want the full six on the front piece because it's exactly the same width as the frame. So that's this one here, but these other two. And then what I've done, so that's my five and seven eighths, that's my six inch, but just to create, I don't want to look, I don't want it to look like a wave. I just wanted it to look like just little kind of, you know, ripples in the water. So I just wanted it just to be not straight, basically. All right, so you can see there, they're just a little bit shaped. Now you can distress these. You might want to do a lighter blue. I pretty much just looked at this one in my scraps and, um, you know, I don't really want to cut into a fresh piece and I knew that this could work. 
So you can, you know, stamp onto this and everything that you want to, but again, because it gets very heavily decorated in my case, you're really not going to see it. All you're going to see is that colour. But this time I just want to continue that kind of the water behind them. So first of all, whatever you're doing on your background, you want to get that one stuck down first. OK, so this piece here also, I forgot to give the measurements, was five and seven eighths squared. So it just gives you a very, very small white border. But again, you don't want to do the whole six by six because it's just going to create bulk. And also, you know, it may affect the card when you go to fold it flat. But you'll see there now. I've just got that very small white border. Okay, then just double check. I'm just making sure that this is the six inch one. Yes, that's the last one I want to stick down on top of my frame. So then you want to add these ones. So you're going to stick these into the next kind of, so where you have your first, I guess, well, it's either a valley or a mountain, depending on how you look at it. Because I said we've got three mountains here, this is to me, this is the valley, but you're going to stick this one onto that, but it'd be down at the bottom here, but it's going to go onto that side there and that side of that one there. Okay, but along the bottom. So just so you know where we're, where we're sticking these. You only need a very small amount of glue, so I'm just popping a little bit there and a little bit there. And again, pop that one in. And because I'm using a liquid glue, it gives you that time to wiggle it around, but you want to squeeze in the concertina folds so that, that piece folds flat like so. Okay, and just hold that there, make sure it's nice and flush with the bottom. You don't want it coming out too far because otherwise the card won't be able to stand up. But I'm just going to hold that there for a second. Okay, so now when you see in there we've got our first section. Okay, then the next one you're going to do the same and this time you're going to stick it on this one here. So this is the last one. So I'm going to open up the top ones there. And then just add my glue again, just a little bit to either end. And just pop that one in there. And again, just squeeze them down so everything's nice and flat. And I can just see there, just the two, it's just like a little ripple in the water, but it's just going to create a nice little effect. So again, just make sure everything folds nice and flat. Okay, so now you can see our two sections there. Okay. Then you want to cut two pieces that are half an inch by five and seven eighths, and these are going to go along the top. But this is only if you want to have things dangling down. So I've done them the same colours as I've got the kind of reeds there or the leaves, whatever you know you're using. But again, they're going to stick in exactly the same way. But it just gives me those two sections to be able to attach all of these leaves. Okay. So again, just stick one down on the same one as the back blue pieces and you want these to be nice and flush with the top. They can, I mean they can come down a bit lower but you don't want them to drop down you know really below that frame. So I'm going to keep mine just flush with the top of the, the card there. I'll stick this one down at the same time. Okay so that's all now in place and so next I want to add glue to the front of these two side pieces and then just stick this one down and this will be the exact size and just frame your card. Okay, and while that's drying, this one I'm now going to stick onto the front so it looks like that water is just continuing out of the frame, which is what I've done there. Okay. okay so that's all done. And like I said, the top tip is is every one you stick down, make sure the card folds flat. You don't want any bulkiness to it because you're already going to be having a lot of bulk with the sides anyway and then with everything that you add to it. But these cards are just fantastic cards for any kind of, I think, underwater theme or just those kind of scene builders because this could be the inside of like a fish tank, for example, and other ones that I've done in my playlist. You know, I do give you lots of examples of just different ways to, you know, make some fun scenes. But now this is all ready to decorate. So... I have quite a few here because I had more kind of prepped for the video, but I have these I can keep for another card another day. So I want two like that, so they're spares. And then we've got our little signets here, which is super cute. These were so easy to colour as well. I just kept, you know, just really kept them white and just added a little bit of grey. Like the signets are really grey and fluffy, so they're a little bit darker. But with the swans themselves, there's just some grey along the bottom and in a few areas there on the, and then I just done the orange beaks. I've got my frog there and my lily pad. I've also got my K 
cattails there. I forgot what they were during the live and I forgot again then. So I've got those, they look lovely. Again, this is all spares for another card, which is always handy. And the frog there as well. Although I have got that one that's a slightly different, I might keep that one actually, it's a little bit different. And then I've got all these pieces here. Again, it was all left over. I just went through and die cut tons of stuff. So I'm gonna start laying everything down. I'm gonna position these pieces first, pretty much the same as I have, you know, with that card there. Maybe I do this one this side. Maybe I'll go a little bit different. We'll do this one on the left and then we can have kind of, he's just come back there and mum's come to say hi. Um, but then I do like them on the front. But this is why it's good to kind of sit down all the placement because this was a lot wider. So with this one here, I'm going to have to feed these back onto these other sections a little bit differently. Definitely got to have that one there. Or maybe he can be set back, just coming out there, that'd look quite nice. So maybe him there, and then mum has just come back. And we can have a couple just coming out from there, and maybe this one just inside there. So that's what we're gonna do. So slightly different arrangement. The frog, mm, where's Mr. Frog gonna go this time? Because he was there, but there may be a bit too much going on. So I might have him sitting in the back there, or maybe he doesn't get used. But now it's all these pieces here, which are gonna come in and stick on those panels that you've created at the top. And I want these to come down quite, you know, um, far down, you know, they're gonna come down right into the, the square here. And then the sentiment is gonna go over the top, like I've done with this one here. So I'm going to pop the video now on high speed and just get this all stuck down. Okay, so you would have just watched me put all that together and I ended up bringing in the other one of the cattails here and I just had the idea to set these back so it actually looks really nice that they're kind of swimming you know in and around everything it's very full I just love it I think it looks great and then I've popped the other of the lily and the lily pads there in the background haven't put the frog in this one I just don't think it's going to work but I did go and stamp my dragonfly which I'm going to attach just coming down there from the side from the top right corner I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue just on the tail just so it's held in place and I'm going to pop some glossy accents on the wings to finish it off and then I know I did say that I was going to have the sentiment coming in from the right because initially I thought that was going to be quite plain but now I've got this here and the dragonfly I'm going to stick it still on this side but just a little bit higher and all I'm doing there is just adding a tiny little bit of glue just to the side I'm using the cloud glue so it dries very very strong and that will stay in place just there. So while that's drying, make sure it's nice and straight. I think it's great. I love that it just hangs and floats kind of in that section. So now I'm just gonna bring in the glossy accents. If you've not seen this before, it's by Ranger. It can be used as a glue, but a lot of people use it to add that kind of glossy finish. That's why it's got the glossy accents. So it's great for using on eyes. So if you've got any stamped images, faces, things like that, the lips, anything that might, you know, you wanna create a shine or that's something that might be wet. So it's great to use for fish if you're doing like underwater scenes. I done the frog there, thought that looked really good. And then I done these kind of just, I don't know, just, well, I'll show you what I did. <laughs> 
So there was no kind of rhyme nor reason with this. I just started to, is this going to be blocked? Yeah, it always gets blocked. So that's the one downer. I'm not going to say it always comes out first time because it doesn't, but I've just got a pin there just from one of my glues and then try it on something off camera. There we go. And then just go in and just kind of, as if you're colouring in, really, it's the easiest way, but I'm not squeezing too hard. Can you see that? And then when that dries, well, you can see it does dry, it dries clear, but it's also dried darker. Can you see that? And I still like it because you can really obviously see it, but when it catches the light. But yeah, how good does that look? And then you can just go around and just pop a little bit on all of their little eyes. And I think it's just a great way of finishing off your cards. And then on the dragonfly here, I just keep the nozzle down on the card. Don't lift it so you won't get any air like that. So I think that's everything I need there. It dries pretty quick, depending on obviously how heavy you go with it, but now you can see just how that gloss finish just hits the light. It's just a really nice detail. I love it. I think it's gorgeous. I love the dimension. I love, you know, there's just so much to look at, all that detail. So that's your 6x6, six six. that's your 5x7. I think they look fab. So like I said, all the measurements will be in my blog for the 5x7. Hopefully, you know, you've taken some inspiration from this video and you're able to create some scenes. Um, as I always say, please go and join the Mixed Up Crafters Facebook page because over there, lots of people share their versions of the cards that I make. So, you know, like I say, if you don't have these materials, which not everybody does, head over to the group because a lot of ladies and men share their cards with their supplies that they use and it gives you even more inspiration and it makes you think, oh, I wish I'd tried that. Well, I've got that. I can do that effect. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up. If you have, consider subscribing if you don't, so you get to see more fun videos. And I'll be back very, very soon with another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.